good morning students today we are going to do the last part of the chapter globalization and indian economy today's our topic is impact of globalization in india when the globalization took place all over the world it has its two types of impact or two ways it has affected on the lives of the people positive way also it has affected the lives of the people negative way also it has affected the lives of the people now when i talk about the positive ways how it has affected the lives of the people in this regard the first thing comes is the consumers who are benefited from this globalization with lots of examples we have seen that when the foreign goods have come to india or when there is a competition between the indian producers and the foreign producers it has been always an advantage to the consumers particularly the well off sections of the urban areas they have got the benefit of this now what are the benefits to the consumers like we have seen in the case of chinese toys when they have come to india it was the consumers who got the benefit of lots of choices lower prices and good quality in the same way for many products the consumers have got the benefit like the improved quality and the lower prices for several products today our producers indian producers have to compete with the producers of the other countries so the prices generally tend to be equal if you are in a competition you have to put your price the almost the same as the price of the other producers then only you can survive in the market so when you do so it is always beneficial for the consumers for example children you might have seen airlines once upon a time only the ultra rich people were able to travel through the these airlines but today even a common man is able to travel through these airlines it is because there is so much of competition and the prices are very low because of this and due to all these today every person especially in the urban areas even the middle income people are able to enjoy a much higher standard of living than earlier today every person in the urban area have a mobile phone even a maid a servant who is coming to our houses they have also the mobile phones it is because it is very cheap other than that among the producers and workers the impact of globalization has not been uniform but if you talk about the producers and the workers some workers got the benefit of the globalization some producers got the benefit of the globalization but on the other hand some producers and some workers they went in great loss so let us see who got the benefit and who did not get the benefit of this globalization firstly mnc's have increased their investment in india over the past 20 years which means investing in india has been beneficial for them so all the multinational corporations they got the benefit they got they are getting the profit because they are investing in the countries like india where the raw material and the labor is very cheap so most of the mnc's have been interested in the industries for example if you see most of these mnc's they have invested money in only few products where they can get the profit for example cell phones automobiles electronics soft drinks fast food such services including the banking in the urban areas for example if you go to any village 
you will not see any American bank or a Scotland bank over there because they know that they will not get benefit there. So that is why these products mainly which are sold in the urban areas in such regions they have invested their money. These products have a large number of buyers especially the well of buyers in the urban areas. So that is why they have invested in such products. For example, if you go and set up a McDonald's in a rural area, definitely it will not work out in a rural area. It will not, it will not be able to get profit in a rural area. So that is why these kind of goods or these kind of services are given in the urban areas because in the urban areas, you will see generally ultra rich people and also the lifestyles of the rich people are different due to which there will be large number of buyers. In these industries and services, new jobs also have been created. If they open one McDonald's or if they open one uh, call center of maybe any company or Nokia or any company, you will see that it will give or it will generate employment. Also, other than these MNCs who are getting the profit, there is another category who are getting the profit. They are the local companies which are supplying the raw material. These MNCs are able to function in India because there are some local companies who are supplying the raw material to these MNCs. So those local companies, not all, only few local companies which are supplying raw material to multinational corporations, they are able to get the profit. Let us take example. For example, we say three students, four students among you, you all are the suppliers. You all are the suppliers. Suppliers of raw materials for the MNCs. But MNC can give order only to one of you. Because all of you are suppliers, all of you are producing raw material, but the MNC will give only one company an order. Now, out of you four, MNC will give order to one company among you four who will supply their raw materials at the cheaper price, cheapest price among you four. All of you will, all the four of you will quote the price. And the one who is quoting the lowest price will get the order from the MNCs. So only that company is getting the profit. Now, how do you think out of you four, suppose A is giving at 1000 rupees raw material, B is giving at 2000, C is giving at 3000 rupees, D is giving at 4000 rupees. Among you, MNC will give order to A company. Because A is giving order at very less price that is only 1000 rupees. Now, how will A give? You may think how A will give at 1000 rupees. A cannot reduce the price of the raw material. First of all, whatever raw material he is getting from wherever he is getting. He cannot reduce the price of that raw material. So, where he can cut the cost? He can cut the cost of the labor. Suppose garments. Let's talk about the garments. One of the MNC companies has given an order of garments to this A company. Because A company is giving the order at a low price. Now, A, how A company will give order at low price? A company cannot cut the cost of raw cotton. It cannot cut the cost of the the fibers obviously. So where it can cut the cost? Because raw cotton he will get at the same price which he was getting earlier. Threads also he will get, loom also he will get at the same price which he was getting earlier. But one place he can cut the cost. Which place it is? It is the labor. He can hire a labor at a very very low cost. And because labor is so much in India, so he will get the labor. He can hire the labor at low cost and then he can produce the goods and then he can supply the goods at rupees 1000 to the MNCs. That's how. So where he is cutting the cost? 
he is cutting the cost of the labor and also making the labor to work for more hours so who is benefited here is and who is not benefited the local company which is supplying raw material to mnc is benefited mnc is also benefited but the loss is to the labor so that's how in india the labor is at a great loss so let's do the next part continuation part rather steps to attract foreign investment government of india it has actually set up two steps through which it can attract many foreign companies to our country that is why you will see lots of foreign companies today in india because the government has taken two steps what are two steps first of all the government has set up special economic zones now what do you mean by special economic zone it means an area which the government has created if government had set up an area that area is called as special economic zone why in that area government has provided the world class facilities for example good infrastructures good roads good communication systems less price of maybe the cheaper price of the water resources the cheaper price of the electricity so all these are provided in that special economic zone that area is created specially for to attract these foreign companies and many foreign companies are attracted by this zone and they have set up their industries factories companies in this area why because in this area as i told you world class facilities are there like good electricity water supply good roads transport storage recreational facilities such facilities are there in these areas and if any foreign company sets up its production units in this area then they do not have to pay taxes for an initial period of 5 years so lot of benefit the government is giving to the multinational corporations that is why many multinational corporations are coming to india for example children noida is a special economic zone you go and see the houses in noida the housing complexes there gives you all these world class facilities in the same way the mncs where they have to work they are given very good facilities that is why many mnc's are attracted towards gurgaon and noida that's one thing special economic zone then the next attraction to the mnc's all mnc's are coming to india why one reason is special economic zone but the most important reason about this is also is labor flexibility of labor laws in india the labor can be hired at a very very cheaper price in earlier days many many years before government fixed the wages for the labor but today it is not so any company can set up its own rules own conditions it can even remove all the laws that means flexible labor laws means labor laws which are set by the government that can be easily changed by the mn for example if if the government says every labor should be given 200 rupees wages per day it's not necessary and mnc can easily change that mnc can give only 100 rupees to a labor and can make them work for even 14 to 15 hours also the government is not going to question them at all so that is what is flexible flexibility means easily changeable flexibility means easily changeable laws so that benefit that authority is given to the multinational corporations through which they can easily change their laws so let's let me just read out this flexibility of labor laws you have seen in the chapter 2 that the companies in the organized sector have to obey certain rules that aim to protect workers we have seen organized and unorganized sector so today all mncs they are working under the uh, in the way of an organized sector where the labor don't have to be hired permanently the labor can be hired temporarily 
and they can be removed any time when the company wants. So in recent years, the government has allowed companies to ignore all the laws. Instead of hiring workers on a regular basis today, companies are hiring workers flexibly for a short period when there is intense pressure of work. Suppose you are the owner of a company, you will hire the labor temporarily because you don't know when your company will get a loss. When there is no uh, order for your company, when you are not getting profit, at that time you can remove your labor also easily if there is flexibility of labor loss. So that's why today most of the companies are hiring labor on a temporary basis. They can be removed anytime. This is done to reduce the cost of labor. What will happen by doing this? The cost of labor will be low. Then the MNCs can earn a large amount of profit. And still doing, after doing so many giving benefits, so many benefits the government is giving to these MNCs, then also they are still not satisfied. Foreign companies are demanding more flexibility in the labor law. That means now they want the labor to pay less, more less than earlier and then make them work more. So this is your negative factor, flexibility of labor laws. For whom? Negative factor for the labor, positive factor for the MNC. Next, positive factors we were doing children. Let's continue with the positive factors for the several top companies. Even several top companies, they have been able to get the benefit of this increased competition. There is new technology, new methods. All these have increased the standard of production. We have seen Mahindra and Mahindra, which collaborated with Ford Motors. So Mahindra and Mahindra is an Indian company. It got the benefit of becoming an MNC. Other than it got the benefit of new technology, which the Ford Motors has brought down. And also it got the, and the production standard also has increased. That's one more benefit for the Indian big companies, which collaborated with the multinational companies. Now, other than that, Moreover, globalization has also enabled some large Indian companies to emerge as multinationals. Because of globalization, many Indian companies have become multinational companies like Tata Motors, Infosys, Ranbaxy. These all have today become the multinational corporation. That means these companies are also setting their companies abroad. That's the meaning. Next, globalization has also created new opportunities for the specially providing services, particularly those involved in IT. So many people, those who are working in the IT sector, they are getting very good wages. They are earning sometimes 2 lakh rupees per month also. So they are getting very good wages because of this globalization. Indian companies, for example, producing a magazine for London-based company and call centers are some examples. Besides host of services such as if you go to uh, any multinational corporation companies, you will see all these uh, under that company, there are so many uh, jobs created, data entry jobs, accounting, administrative tasks, engineering are now being done cheaply in our countries like India. They are paid well in our country. If you compare with the labor in America, Indian labor is very cheap then also. So that's how many, even some people who are working in the IT sector, they are getting the benefit of this globalization, but not the whole, all the labor. We'll do the examples for that also. So the questions are, how has competition benefited people in India? How we are benefited, consumers? We are getting better quality goods. We are getting cheaper quality goods. We are uh, the cheaper prices of the goods, better quality goods, cheaper prices of the goods and a lot of variety of the goods. Should more Indian companies emerge as MNCs? Yes, of course. How would it benefit the people in the country? We will get the benefit because there will be more competition among the companies, producers and we will get a better quality goods. Next. Why do governments try to attract more foreign investment? By getting foreign investment, our country's government will, our country's economy will improve. 
governments will also get lot of money from that in chapter 1 we saw what may be development for one if you all remember this chapter 1 development we have done this what may be development for one may be destructive for others this line you remember the setting up of special economic zones has been opposed by some people in india these zones like noida gurugaon these special economic zones when they are created many people in our country were against it do you know who were those people and why were they against it the people were environmentalists who were the people environmentalists now who are the environmental why were they against because when these zones are created there will be so much of pollution so many trees have to be cut down to create such regions to lay down the uh, big roads like we have done in geography the uh, the big express ways if those roads have to be laid down for example when they were laid down in uh, gurgaon and noida several trees had to be cut down so many environmentalists were against such special economic zones we have the next part which will tell you the negative factor of globalization who were not who who did not get the benefit the small producers very small producers will go we are going to do the example like when i say the four children among you will get an order from mnc that person will get the benefit but what about the other three companies they have to shut down because they won't be able to compete with the mnc so let's see for example rising competition there is a person called as ravi who had started his own uh, a small a unit and the small unit is of uh, he used to produce the capacitors capacitors are children used in the uh, several electronic home appliances like television tube lights etc even television and other things also so he used to produce uh, capacitors in a small town called as hojar in tamil nadu and within 3 years he was able to expand his business production and 20 workers he hired uh, he hired under him but suddenly what happened many multinational companies now because the government has started liberalization many uh, indian companies tv production companies what they started doing they started importing capacitors from the other countries because they were getting at a cheaper price because there was no import tax there was no or very less import tax was there because the liberalization took place we have done all this import taxes were removed by the government so at that time lot of imports of the capacitors they started coming to india and these television companies started buying the capacitors from the foreign countries so it was hard hit to the ravi ravi now the ravi's capacitors they were not able to sell much as earlier not only this one more problem happened that many mnc's they set up their own uh, factories in india and started producing the televisions so our indian television companies closed many mnc's television companies were set up like samsung etc because of which his capacitors had no demand at all now his production had to be reduced he had to remove the labor also from the jobs and people like many people like ravi even had to close down their businesses so it's only the not only examples of capacitors many people in india those who were producing these goods like batteries capacitors plastic toys tires dairy products vegetable oil all of them had to close down their units and they all were hit hard due to this competition so several became jobless several units got closed down in this manner for example children you know now there is world of internet we are able to buy the goods sitting at home through the internet we are ordering what is because of this what is happening the companies which are selling through the internet are getting benefit but those small shops go to the, uh, the your local uh, shops they are all hard hit they are not getting any benefit so what are the ways in which ravi small production unit was affected by rising competition he had to 
he had to close down his unit because he was not get he was not able to sell his capacitors as now indian companies tv companies were buying capacitors from the foreign countries as well as many television foreign companies have come to india so he was hard hit should producers such as ravi stop production because their cost of production is higher in compared to producer in other countries obviously he had to close down he cannot uh, sell at a higher cost recent studies point out small some small producers in india need three things to compete better market better roads power etc timely available improvements and modernization of technology etc can you explain how these three things would help our indian producers do you think these things are going to produce uh, give yes if the better roads are there if less cheaper power is there water supply is cheap for them raw materials are cheaper definitely our producers will get the benefit Do you think MNCs will be interested in investing in these? Never. MNC will never invest in cheaper electricity, cheaper water supply, etc. They will be never interested in such things. They will invest in those companies, those goods, whose buyers are generally the rich people. Do you think the government has a role in making these facilities available? Yes. The government has to. provide these facilities even to our indian producers not only to mnc's that's so can you think any other step the government could take government can put barriers on import and the export or increase the taxes on mnc's then our indian producers will not go in loss next example is of the labor how the labor is getting lost because of this flexibility of labor laws competition and uncertain employment globalization and the pressure of competition have substantially changed the lives of workers faced with growing competition most employers these days prefer to employ workers flexibly today most of the companies employ the laborers on a temporary basis flexibly means this means that the workers jobs are no longer secure they can be removed from the job any time there is one example here of a garment worker sushila who is a, who spent many years as a worker in a garment export industry in delhi and she was a permanent worker earlier and she used to get lots of benefits like insurance provident fund overtime etc earlier but the factory got closed in 1990 because it was not able to compete with the mncs so after searching a job for many years she, uh, six months she finally got a job which is very far from her house 30 kilometers far away and now she is a temporary worker see temporary workers earns less than what she was earning earlier and if she takes any leave her salary will be cut and she has to work 7 days not only 6 days 7 days a week and her timings are very harsh 7:30 to 10 pm so you can see how the labor is made to work many many hours if many of your parents are working in the multinational corporations you can see day and night they are made to work by these industry so large multinational corporations especially in the garment industry is from europe and america order their products to the indian exporters this example i told you if the company is a company of europe and america what they do they will order to our indian exporters these large multinational corporations worldwide network look for the cheapest goods they want the person who can provide them the cheaper raw material cheapest goods and indian garment uh, uh, exporters our indian exporters try to hard cut their own cost what they will do if our indian exporter is there he will not get lost definitely see if you are a producer you have to supply the garments to multinational corporation of america will you take the loss definitely not you also want the profit mnc also want the profit so where will be the cost cut the cost will be cut of the labor you can cut only the cost of the labor because you cannot reduce the cost of raw material so that is what in earlier also i told you this example so where earlier a factory used to employ worker on a permanent basis now they employ worker on a temporary basis so when the when the supply has to be done when the 
when they get the order when you for example you are a producer you will get the order you will employ the labor once the order is over you will remove the labor so that's how also you will get the profit and their labor you will make the labor to work for more hours not 8 hours you will make the worker to work for 12 hours 14 hours and also you will pay them very very less and also sometimes you will make them work day and night in shift also in shift also you will make them day and night when it's the peak season when you will get more order so wages are low workers are forced to work overtime to finish the order that is how the labor is in a great loss in our country while well, this competition among the garment exporters has allowed mnc's to make large profits workers are denied their fair share of benefits brought about by the globalization so globalization has brought benefit to few but loss also to few group of people and that completes the chapter children and after going through all my videos you will go through all the questions and i'm sure you will be able to do the questions also any query you have you are welcome to ask me children so that's all children for today have a good day